Welcome to the Lockdown Lookup, a daily devotion video series through the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22 to 23 is quite a common passage of scripture and uh, not without reason. It's a very important passage and also just the metaphor of fruit is quite uh, easy to understand. Even Jesus would say in Matthew 7 verse 19 that you will recognize them by their fruit. And so the idea is quite simple. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, then there will be evidence of that. And the evidence, according to Galatians 5, is this list of characteristics that we call the fruit of the Spirit. And in fact, it's quite interesting, just before verse 22 comes a little bit of a contrast between what is called the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the Spirit. And there's a subtle difference there uh, between works and fruit. You see, when life lived in the flesh, just in our humanity, is a life of striving, of labor, of hard work. Whereas the idea of fruit is that it's something that should come naturally out of a vibrant and healthy uh, relationship with Jesus. Now, before we get to these list of characteristics today, I want to make a case for just how important this list of the fruit of the Spirit is. And part of it is just in the simple definition that it's evidence of the Holy Spirit. But I want to go so far as to say this, the degree to which a person is filled with the Spirit is measured by a display of the fruit of the Spirit. So that's really important. A degree to which someone is filled with the Spirit will be evidenced by the display of these fruit of the Spirit. And so if you want to be walking in an increasing manner with the Spirit or be more filled with the Spirit, then these fruit should be increased. But I want to take just a little bit of extra time to compare the fruit of the Spirit uh, with its more popular cousin, what we call the gifts of the Spirit. And I know that's kind of an unfair comparison. They're really two separate things, although they are both just results of the Holy Spirit being active in your life. Now, the reason I want to do that is because for most people, uh, the gifts of the Spirit just get more of the attention. I mean, think about it. Prophecy, healings, miracles. Those just sound like things we would want to pursue in our lives versus like patience, kindness. I mean, really, it's just uh, not quite as glamorous as the others. But I want to I want to compare these two for a second here, just so we can see how important this is. So here's four reasons uh, why the fruit of the Spirit should be preeminent in our thinking as evidence of the Holy Spirit. So, number one, uh, all fruit of the Spirit, so all of these nine things, all fruit should be experienced or evident in all Christians' lives. Any Christian should be evidencing these nine things. Whereas when it comes to the gift, while it's really quite different, the Holy Spirit gives different gifts, many different gifts. just give to different people as he determines according to the needs of the church. There's really just no way of saying that all should be evident by Christians. Whereas fruit of the Spirit, every Christian should display all of the fruit of the Spirit. Number two, the gifts of the Spirit will not last into eternity, but the fruit of will. So 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8, that classic passage on love says, love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. And as for other gifts of the Spirit, they will pass away. But love, first in the list of the fruit of the Spirit, will never pass away. Think about that. The fruit will be evident in eternity. The gifts will not be necessary. Number three, there is an overlap I think, when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, there's an overlap between the gifts and kind of natural human ability and even personality. Uh, kind of the idea is that, you know, if you practice hard enough at something, uh, you can get good at it. And maybe that's not entirely possible with the gifts, but uh, I mean, let's be honest, uh, some people would claim to have some of these gifts. Really, it's just their charismatic personality and it can get quite abused. Whereas when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, man, I just don't believe that you can fake that. You can't fake patience. I mean, you either got it or you don't. And so it's, it's really a higher degree of evidence of the Holy Spirit than gifts. Uh, number four, and this is the clincher in my argument, character or fruit sustains gifts. In other words, comes first, 
and is more important. Now, where do we see that? Well, 2 Timothy chapter 2 is an important passage about how God uses different people, and it's an urge to kind of um, flee from sinful things so that God would use you. So this is what it says. It says, Now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for, well, dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. That's what we want to be. We want to be the vessels for honorable use, ready for every good work, set apart by the master of the house. So, flee youthful passions and pursue, listen to this list, righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Guess what? Those appear on the list of fruit of the Spirit. Pursue those things along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. In other words, pursue the fruit and you'll be set apart to be used by God in remarkable ways, i.e. gifted for use once the fruit is evident. So basically, I'll put it this way. The gifts are great. The fruit is necessary. And so we really want to see these fruit grow in our lives. That's why we're doing this video series. And we hope that by the end of lockdown, the fruit of the Spirit will have increased in our lives as evidence of the increasing work of the Holy Spirit. See you tomorrow.